Welcome to Weave Healthcare Science on Sofa. Hello, welcome to this episode of Science on Sofa. I'm Vani Vannapagari, Global Head of Epidemiology and Real World Evidence. And today, I'm joined by Axel for a conversation on real world data and real world evidence. Thank you, Annie. Well, my name is Axel Bautista, and I'm the Community Mobilization Coordinator at Impact Global Action. And I'm a sociologist, too, and a person living with HIV. We are going to be doing this episode slightly differently. Axel is going to be interviewing me, so I'm going to turn it over to Axel. Thank you, Annie. I did some polls in my social media, and I asked my audience like if they know what it's what real world evidence is and basically 92 percent of my followers like they didn't know anything about it you know so it would be very great if you could explain to us to the audience what real world evidence means excellent question real world data is the data that we generate during people's normal routine clinical care setting they go to their physicians office, they get their care, they get their prescription, and they use their treatments as they should be using, and then they go back to the physician's office to get tested and to see how those treatments are working. All of this data together is called real world data. And any insights we get out of the real world data, we call real world evidence. But what's the difference between like a clinical trial and the, I don't know, like a study based on real world yes. evidence. So in clinical trial, the participants are asked to use the drug in a certain way and they are very closely monitored. In real world, we are hands off. We are not interfering with the patient care at all. We are only observing what is happening together there will be thousands of people and their data, that's what we look at and then we see the patterns. How are the drugs being used? Will they work as good as they did in those studies when they are used in real world with people who sometimes forget to take their medication? S sometimes they have other um, ailments like diabetes or hypertension. In that sense, this is continuation of the um, data and our understanding of the drugs from clinical trials, it just continues in the real world. What do doctors think about the benefits that they have for the community yeah. of people living with HIV? We also look at all the subgroups that are now using this, these drugs. And some of those subgroups would not be included in the clinical trials. And that's where real world evidence comes into picture. So it gives confidence to the physicians that these drugs work as well. So why science in general regarding HIV is not including like all races, all ethnic backgrounds, it's not including um, all genders, all identities? That's an excellent question, Axel. It is something that we in the research world grapple with all the time. We Healthcare is particularly aware of these data gaps, particularly aware of the underrepresentation of the people that are affected um, by um, the epidemic in our clinical trials. So we do have a diversity in clinical trials task force that is looking at how to improve our recruitment, enrollment of people from various backgrounds. What we are also doing is we, now, we will have dedicated studies where in real world, we will collect data on all of the understudied, underrepresented groups. That's how we can actually fill in some of these data gaps that have existed. Well, thank you, Annie, for um, explaining to me what real world evidence is and to have having this conversation about many, many things around it. That's going to be helpful to include different cultural and uh, social and economic uh, factors that are um, affecting the implementation of any drug mm -hmm. regarding HIV or other conditions, you know, like the importance of being more multifactorial yeah. when we do our research, you know, yeah. because that's society. 
Society is not one thing, but also I think that is not enough. I would invite the community to um, empower themselves about data, you know. When we advocate more, we push science, we force science to go like beyond and to go further, you know. I'll be the first to agree that there is a lot more work that we do need to do. Um, so yes, it's happening, we're moving in the right direction, there's much more to do. Axel, thank you very much for joining me um, for this episode of Science on Sofa. Bunny, thank you so much for inviting me. It was a honor to be with you. So thank you so much. <laughs>